Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash. My name's Ashley, and today I'm gonna bring you 10 super cute, really easy, bee-themed decor ideas for your tear tray. Now, I'm gonna have this bee decor out for May and June, and then we'll switch to 4th of July, but I really wanted to put this out. So to speed up the video a little bit, I have sped up certain parts of it, so if it goes a little faster, that's why, or else we'd be here all day. <laughs> all right, but first, before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, then hit that little notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. Then, if you like what you see, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps my channel to grow. Also, don't forget to check me out on Facebook and Instagram and join my crafting community. All right, let's get started with these beautiful DIYs. So this first DIY is super easy. So I first started off with two of these little wooden cars that I got in Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree. And then I took these leftover paint brushes, the foam brushes, because we're going to be using the wooden stick. So the first thing I did was cut off the wheels. Now you can cut them off with scissors, but I was just afraid they were gonna ruin my scissors. So I grabbed my miter shears and they just clipped right off. It was perfect. So I went ahead and took off all of the wheels on both of the cars. Now when you do this, you wanna make sure that you get as close to the wheel as possible. So you wanna get the majority of the stick out of the wheel. And I'm gonna show you two different ways that I did this and you're gonna see why you're gonna want to really get that stick off of there. After that, I went ahead and sanded all of them down. Next, I took the wood glue that I got from Dollar Tree and then some hot glue for that permanent hold and that instant hold and I stacked four of the wheels on top of each other and then I went ahead and glued the stick at the bottom of that. Now because there's still a little piece of the dowel rod on each of the wheels you can see that they're not really sticking. They're kind of wobbly. So this was the first one I made and then I learned from my mistakes and I'm going to show you what I did to kind of fix this problem and it worked out so much better, trust me. <laughs> Okay, so before I started gluing my second one together, I decided to take this little knife and really get as close as possible and get all of that off. I mean, I could have really sanded it all down, but I just didn't wanna do that. It just seemed easier to me to go ahead and snip off, and this worked out so much better. Make sure to sand down each piece before you start gluing. And then I just did the same thing, and as you can see, they are sticking so well, especially when I go to glue on the stick right here you in the first one you could tell I had to hold it I had to let it sit but this one attached instantly because it wasn't wobbly because there was no bump in the middle with that stick so it turned it worked out so much better so taking that extra step will really save you a lot of work at the end so after these were dry, I went ahead and took my hot glue and just kind of ran my hot glue all over the top of the little honeycomb and then on the bottom. I think that's what this is called, <laughs> or honey stick, or I'm not sure what this is called. Then I let that dry. Next, I took this paint color called Maze, and we're going to be using this paint color throughout this entire video. You can pick this up at Walmart, although I did hear that it is going out of stock, so you're gonna wanna hurry, but it is a Waverly chalk paint, and it's called Maze. So I went ahead and poured that in a little coffee filter and then put some water just to kind of water it down so it looked more like honey and it wasn't so stark yellow. And then I simply just painted all over the hot glue on both of my little honey sticks. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call them. <laughs> After those were dry, I took this little buffalo check gin or gingham ribbon uh, that I got from the Dollar Tree and I just simply tied a simple bow right underneath where the little honey part is. Then I cut off the tails and I did this for both. Now, I'm gonna be showing you all of this in the final reveal at the end, so you're going to wanna stick with me. 
All right, for my next DIY, I grabbed this little gnome from the Dollar Tree and I purposely got the one with the yellow shirt because I thought that it might save me a little time. So to start off, I just started painting his hat with just regular black acrylic paint. You can use any black paint you have. Then I went ahead and grabbed these little clothespin bees that I found at Hobby Lobby and they were 40% off because they were in the spring shop. And I took the one off of, I took the bee off of the clothespin. Next, I grabbed that gingham ribbon again, or buffalo check, <laughs> and I hot glued it around the brim of the hat. Now I made sure to kind of scoot it up a little bit so a little bit of the black was showing underneath. And then I just hot glued it around. After that, I took that bee and hot glued it to the front of that ribbon. Now off camera, I did go back and paint paint his yellow shirt with the maize color because I wanted it all to be matching and this was just a little too golden yellow. So you'll see at the end how it all coordinated. But that was it and this came out super cute. So I have been obsessed with making these little book stacks out of these crates for my tiered trays. And like I said in January, you're gonna see me make one for literally every tiered tray this year. <laughs> so I went ahead and picked up this wooden crate from the Dollar Tree, and then I gave the top of the box, well, technically it's the bottom, but it's gonna be flipped over. But I painted the top with the yellow maize paint, and then the top little slat and the bottom slat. Now I did go ahead and paint the sides. I know technically, the sides of a book would not be yellow, but I really wanted it to be bright and colorful, so I just decided to do it. Now when you do this, don't forget to paint on the inside of those little holes as well. For the middle little strip there, I painted that with Waverly chalk paint in white. After that dried, I took my sanding block and lightly sanded over the entire box just to kind of bring out that natural wood from underneath. Next, I took these black stickers from the Dollar Tree and I started all the way on one end and then I started backwards. So you wanna start with the end of the word first. But what I spelled out was always be kind, B-E-E, -E, as you're going to see. So like I said, I started all the way off to the side and then worked my way out, starting with the last letter first. Once I was done with that, I took that little knife and I just kind of used it to help me straighten up all the letters, peel them off, make them straighter. And then once I liked how they were positioned, I pushed them down really hard. I put a lot of pressure. And then I took my sanding block and just lightly sanded over it so that way the lettering wasn't so stark black. Next, I used my black paint marker, or you could use a black Sharpie, and starting from the bottom, I just kind of drew little lines to make it look like the buzzing of the bee, I guess. I don't know, it's just one of those little designs that always seem to be on bee decor. Then after that was dry, I took my sanding block and went ahead and sanded over that too. Next, to seal my letters and my paint, I gave the front a coat of Mod Podge. To add a little cuteness up top, I took this ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby and I loved it because it has the little balls on the side and I decided I wanted to actually make it a little wider. So what I did was I started the bottom of the box and then went up and around and down the bottom, back to the bottom of the other side of the box. But you can see that I'm doing it off to the side on one of the holes. Then I took a second strip and just put it right next to the first strip to, like I said, make it a little bit wider. Next, I took some yellow twine that I also got from the Dollar Tree, and starting in the middle, I just wrapped it around so it kind of covered where the two ribbons up top met. Now, I did go ahead and wrap it all the way underneath the crate too because it really was not gonna add that much 
instability, I guess, or make it that much wobbly. And then I went ahead and cut it off at the bottom, tied the two ends together, and add a little bit of hot glue to help it stay down. Next, I took more of that gingham ribbon that I used in the first two DIYs, and I just made a very simple bow. Now, I did kind of want my tails to be long because I wanted the tails to hang, uh, one tail to hang over the front and then one tail to hang over the side, as you can see here. And then I just hot glued it down to the right side of my crate. I like to leave one side of my box or my stack of books free of any kind of accessories because it's a great way to be able to stack things on top of to add layers to your tiered tray. So I like to keep the other end completely clear. Then I went ahead and just dovetailed the ends of my tails. Next, I grabbed this little bee that actually came in a package from Hobby Lobby and they were originally picks to put in floral arrangements, but I pulled the pick out and this little bee was brown and yellow and really gave me that Pikachu vibe and that just needed to go. So what I did was just painted all of the brown part with my black paint. And then I just went over the little wings a little bit too to make them a little bolder and then used my white paint marker to add little eyes and then I simply hot glued them down in the middle of my bow and then I was left with this really cute always be kind stack book set. For my fourth DIY, this is so easy. I found these little jars from the Dollar Tree and on the side, you can't really tell right now, but it's kind of the shape of a honeycomb or what would make you think of bees. So all I did was simply paint each of the lids with a few coats of the maize paint from Walmart. Once those were dry, I hot glued one of these little blocks that you can get in a package from the Dollar Tree on top of the middle of each lid. Then I went ahead and painted those with the maize paint as well to make it all blend in. Then to finish off this project, I took those bees that I got from the clothespin, popped the clothespin off and simply hot glued the bee to the front of the block. And I was left with these super cute little jars for my tiered tray. This is DIY number five. I could not believe it when I walked into the Dollar Tree and right there, right at the front were these little boxes. I mean, if this doesn't scream bees, well there's bees all over it, oh, I don't know what does. And I'm showing you there that it's actually a two pack. So the first thing I did was I took them out of the package and then I took the smaller lid and this cat scratching post or block or whatever you want to call it and I just traced the small lid around the little cat scratching little thing I don't even know what to call it but this just reminded me of the honeycomb and then I made sure that it could fit inside of the lid so I did have to trim down some of the um, edges and the sides but I just wanted to make sure that it was a perfect fit After that, I took out the little uh, uh, honeycomb, I guess you want to call it, and I painted the outside of the lid with black acrylic paint. After the lid was dry, I went ahead and popped that little honeycomb back in. And as you can see, I didn't even need hot glue. That's how perfect the fit was. And I, it fit in there very tightly. Then I just kind of cut up some scrap pieces to fill in any holes that may have been around the sides. Next, I took my hot glue and just spread hot glue all over again just to kind of make that honey look. 
Next, I took those bees from the pics again, and of course, I made them look <laughs> go from Pikachu to actual bees, and I painted all the brown in black. And then once my hot glue was dry, I took that maize paint and just painted over all of the hot glue. Now, it did kind of look a little bright at first, so I took my finger and I kind of wiped it just to kind of make it a little less stark yellow. And then I just did this all over the hot glue all over my little honeycomb. Once my paint was dry, I took my bees, and they do have little wire legs on them, so I cut them off, but I just thought it would stick better onto my little honeycomb. And then I went ahead and hot glued the bees on my honeycomb. Next, I flipped it on its side and took that buffalo check ribbon and just hot glued the ribbon all around the side of the lid. Now to add extra support to the back to help it stand, I took one of these tumbling tower blocks and hot glued it to the bottom of my little honeycomb. Now off camera, I did go back and paint that with black acrylic paint. That way it all blended in, but how cute was that? Okay, next up, I grabbed this candle from the Dollar Tree, and of course I got it because it's yellow. And this one's so simple. All I did was hot glue some of that buffalo check ribbon on top, it's kind of right underneath the lip of the candle. And then I decided to put some at the bottom where you can see that it, it's kind of a different size, it's like the very bottom. And then I took one of those bees off of the clothespin again, and then just hot glued it to the top of the buffalo check ribbon and that was it and it left me with this really cute candle and by the way it smells so good but this is perfect for a tiered tray For this next DIY, I grabbed one of these pots that I had left over from St. Patrick's Day. And again, I just took my hot glue and just let it drip, starting from the top and just let it drip down to make it look like honey was spilling over from the pot. And then I did load up the top to the very top of it. Then I set it aside to let it dry. Once it was dry, I took that maize paint again and just simply painted over all of the dried hot glue to make it look like honey. Once that was dry, I took some little pieces of floral foam and stuck them inside my pot. Next, I took this little garden chalkboard stick that came in a package from the Dollar Tree. I did cut down the bottom to make it a little shorter and then by using my white paint marker, I wrote free honey right on the chalkboard. After that was done, I stuck it inside of the floral foam and then realized that I need, needed something to go inside. So I cut up more of that cat scratching thing and I stuck that in the middle around my little sign. Then I painted the that with the maize paint from Waverly. To finish this off, I went ahead and took one of those bees from the clothespin and hot glued that to the stick and then I took that buffalo check ribbon and made a very simple bow and tied it to one part of the little handle of my pot. And now I have this really cute little honey pot.
This next DIY I am definitely adding to every single tiered tray I make for the rest of my life. <laughs> so I started off with a plunger stick and by using my table saw, I cut them down to five inches and I cut two pieces at five inches. Then I went ahead and sanded the ends of both. So on one of the sticks, I actually painted it in white Waverly chalk paint, but you're gonna see me change that, so just skip this step. I don't even know why I showed it, but then the other one I painted with just regular black acrylic paint. Now you wanna make sure to get the ends too. Then I went back to that original stick that I painted white and decided to paint it with that maize color instead. Then I put both of those aside and let them dry. Once they were dry, I took some letters, some scrapbook letters that I got from the Dollar Tree and they were stickers, and I spelled out happy on one of my dowels and B, B-E-E, -E, on the other one. Now on the one that I spelled out happy, I, after all my letters were down, I painted over it with that maize paint. Now I did have to give this a couple coats to completely cover the black. Now this is the other one. This is not the one I just painted yellow. This is the one that was originally white that I painted yellow. And on this one, I put B. Now you notice that I'm putting the words all the way off to one side. I purposely do that because then that way when I go to display, I can use them for layering and stacking and things like that. So after this word was on, I took my black paint and painted this entire thing with that. And again, you wanna make sure to get your ends as well. Then I put both of those aside and let them dry. After that, I took my little knife to help me peel off the stickers from underneath the top layer of paint. Now, if some of the paint bled through, just like you see here, that E, there's a little black, I just simply took my yellow paint and just painted a little bit over it and that really fixed the problem. Then I took the other one and did the same thing. Now, a little bit of the yellow did get inside my black letters, so I just simply took my black paint marker and traced over it, that way it covered up the yellow that got on it. To make the ends of my rolling pins, I took these earplugs that I got from the Dollar Tree and I used the super glue from the Dollar Tree and hot glue and hot glued one down on each end of my rolling pins. Now you do wanna hold this down and make sure it adheres fully and then let it dry. So then once I put the earplugs on, I went ahead and kind of cleaned up the edges so there wasn't any glue seeping out. Once they were fully adhered and dried on the yellow rolling pin, I painted those with white chalk paint. Then on the other rolling pin, after those were glued on, I painted those with the yellow maize paint. Now I did have to give those a couple coats to cover up the orange underneath. To decorate my rolling pins a little bit, I took my black paint marker and on the yellow rolling pin, I drew that buzzing <laughs> uh, design going from one end of the rolling pin to the word. Then on my black rolling pin, I used that maize paint and a small paintbrush and did the same thing. To complete my rolling pins, I grabbed that ribbon that had the little balls and I only want the balls. So I went ahead and cut off just the end of the ribbon. 
Then I took some yellow twine, and this is yellow and white twine that I also got from the Dollar Tree, and I took a piece of that and then tied both around the end that had the word. And then I just repeated the same thing on the other rolling pin, and I thought these came out so adorable. You can see why I'm addicted to making these, and they are definitely going on every tiered tray. Real quick, I just wanted to remind you, if you are loving what you're seeing so far, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. That way, you can see more of what I have to offer. Now, to protect my paints, I went ahead and gave each one a coat of Mod Podge. How cute are those? This next one is super easy. I found this little yellow flower wax warmer at the Dollar Tree, and all I'm doing is simply hot gluing one of those bees. Now, I did transformed this from Pikachu and painted it black as well. And I hot glued one to one side of the flower and one to the other side. Now you will see me take one of them off and move it in just a second. And in just a second, you'll see what this wax warmer actually looks like when I flip it to its side right here. Then I took that buffalo check ribbon and I hot glued it around the top of the warmer right underneath the flower. Then, like I said, I decided to move one of my bees so I took the front one off and then I hot glued it to where the opening is underneath. Now I'm planning on adding a little tea light candle in here and it looks super, super adorable. I loved how this came out. It's so easy too. Okay, we finally made it to the last DIY, and of course, no tear tray is complete without a beaded garland. So what I did was I took some 16 millimeter beads and I put 15 beads in three plastic baggies. Then I took 15 20 millimeter beads and put those in a plastic bag. Now in one of my plastic bags with the smaller beads, I put some of that maize paint and some water. Then I took the 20 millimeter beads and did the same thing. I put some maize paint and some water. Then for the other two, the smaller beads, I put white chalk paint in one of them and then black chalk paint in the other and I added water to each of those as well. Then I just kind of used my hands and rolled it all around and made sure that all of the paint got onto all of the beads. I learned this method a couple months ago and I've been using this to paint my beads. So in the end, you should have 15 16 millimeter black beads, white beads and yellow beads and then 15 20 millimeter yellow beads. So once they were all dry, or once they were all covered, I should say, I took a skewer and just took out all of the beads. I didn't want to pour it all in there because I didn't want all the water to get in there or else they would never dry. So that's how I got all of the beads out. Now the yellow ones I did go ahead and give another coat to because they did not stain very well and I think it's because I didn't put enough paint in there. But after all of my beads were dry, I took my yellow twine and added some hot glue to kind of make the edge a little pointier to help me thread through all of my beads. Now I did follow a pattern here, but I messed up this first little bit, so I'll tell you my pattern in a minute, but this is what I'm doing. I went ahead and put on the three smaller beads and then a big yellow bead. Now we'll be doing something to those big yellow beads in a minute. Okay, so the pattern that I followed was black small bead, yellow small bead, white small bead, and then big yellow bead. I hope that made sense. And then I just did this until all of my beads were used. Once all of my beads were threaded on, I took this yellow and white twine and then I just wrapped it around the my sand block because I really like the length that that is. Now I can't tell you how many times I wrapped it. I just wrapped it and wrapped and wrapped it until I got the thickness that I wanted. Then I went ahead and took it off. All right, now follow me closely with this because I kind of messed it up so it's kind of choppy, but I do, I'm gonna try to explain this the best I can. So I took what that twine, and I looped it through one of the ends of my beaded garland. Now you can do this, but do not tie it off. I forgot that I wanted to add that buffalo check ribbon. So then I went ahead and cut off the ends. Now, what you didn't see was, once I realized I forgot the ribbons, I took that twine, that big bundle of twine, the tassel, 
off. I untied it and then I cut up all my ribbons and now I'm just laying it flat on one end of the string of my garland and now I'm tying it back on. I really hope that makes sense. I apologize. I just didn't know how else to do this. So then once I had all my twine and the ribbons on I took one of the smaller pieces and just tied it up top that way it looks like a tassel then I cut off the excess string from the actual garland and hot glued that down now to the other string that's wrapped around the tassel I just kind of wrapped it around and then I didn't have enough to tie it in the back so I just hot glued it and it, it's fine it worked out perfectly Once my tassel was secure on one end, I pushed all my beads down so the last bead right on top of the tassel is flush right up against it. Then I gave my little tassel a haircut to make sure all of the twine and ribbon was even. For the other end of my garland, I'm going to be using these really cute bee wood cutouts that I got from Hobby Lobby, and I took out the little hive. Now before I hot glued it to the string, I did tie a knot right underneath that black last bead. Then I just simply flipped it over and hot glued it down. Now you want to make sure that the bead is on top of the little wood piece or even you don't want it behind the wood piece so you want to make sure to put the bead right on top of it then I cut off any excess string and then doused the back of it with hot glue that way it didn't come off I did end up adding a little piece of tape just to give it an extra hold Okay, so now we are going to work on those big yellow beads. Now for this, I started off using a Sharpie, but then I switched to my black paint marker. But I simply just drew stripes on every big yellow bead. Now at first I only went halfway around the bead and then I decided just to go all the way around the bead and I did three stripes on every big yellow bead. I am not doing this to the smaller yellow beads, just the big ones. I thought that maybe this replicated a little bit of a bee. <laughs> I thought it would be cute. So I just did this until all of my big beads were covered in stripes. Now, I, as I was looking at that little hive, I just decided that it just needed a little bit more black, so I simply just outlined it, and it's white there, so it was easy for me to follow. And then that completed this amazing beaded garland. This next one isn't really a DIY, but I wanted to show you this anyways. I picked up this bee in the garden section at the Dollar Tree, and it was just a little too golden yellow, so I went ahead and painted all of the yellow with my Maze Waverly chalk paint. That way it matched all of my other decor on my tiered tray. Now it's time for my final reveal. What do you think? Now, as you can see, these are not on my tiered tray yet. You're gonna have to join me for a video in the next couple weeks as I decorate my coffee bar because I have a lot of great ideas in mind. But what do you think of these amazing, beautiful DIYs? I am absolutely loving this bee theme and I know my mom is loving it too. She loves the color yellow, so it's just so bright in the kitchen and so pretty and I 
cannot wait to put these all out on the coffee bar. You're gonna have to let me know in the comments which one is your favorite and if you're going to be recreating any of these DIYs. Also, what are you into for the summer themes? Are you into lemons, watermelons, bees? What are you going to be decorating with? I think these came out adorable, and like I said, I cannot wait to add these to the coffee bar. And this is my little plug to remind you to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get notified when I do add these to my coffee bar and upload that video, because I know that you're not going to want to miss it. Then, if you would be so kind to give this video a thumbs up, that really helps my channel to grow. I wanna thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have been inspired today and got some ideas on some DIYs that you can make to add a little bit of brightness to your home. Well, until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!